All right, YouTube, so before we hop into it, we are almost at 9,500 subscribers, the next 100 milestone on the road to 10,000. So if you guys are new, please subscribe. All right, YouTube, so we have another Twitter news roundup for Fallout 76. And before we even get into it, I want to say something. Within the three or so years I've been doing YouTube and talking about video games, I don't think I've ever got any information for a video game from a tweet, not to mention how much we've gotten for Fallout 76 from Twitter and how consistently that happens. It's pretty damn strange, and it's kind of weird, but it's almost become the norm for this game now. I'm not super against it because information for the game is still information for the game. It doesn't matter where we get it, but I would prefer that they would take all these things and group it into uh, like an article they drop on Bethesda.net or something instead of us getting looking on you know Pete Hines' replies on Twitter to see if there's any new information today. It's kind of frustrating at times. Anyways, let's get into it. So first up for this video and seemingly the most important information you will get from this video is that the guitar sword is actually not playable. If you guys didn't watch my last video or maybe somebody else's video covering this new weapon, there is a guitar sword of all damn things. People were wondering if it's actually going to be a playable instrument in the game because we've actually seen through some of the gameplay characters at like a settlement or a camp or whatever you want to call it playing instruments. So it's not like a strange or out of the realm of possibility thing to ask. Like it's actually a pretty feasible question. We were talking about it in my last video as well. And it's sadly, you cannot play it. Now we're going to take a quick break from Pete Hines' Twitter. We will be back, and we're going to look at the Fallout Twitter. And this is something that they tweeted out uh, a few days ago. It actually came out before the guitar sword and the sickle man picture and everything like that. And it's actually about experience and how that's kind of dispersed amongst a group. So they tweeted out Fallout 76 DYK teams. And I'll be completely honest, I don't know what the hell DYK is. Maybe it's something simple going over my head, but I have no idea what that is. But it says, every team member who assists in killing an enemy, successfully lands a blow, shot, etc., gets experience the team member to land the fatal blow gets slightly more xp anyone can loot an enemy corpse after it's been killed regardless of who killed it now to the best of my knowledge this is the first time we've heard anything about experience when it comes to teams we've talked about looting and stuff we've known for a while now that you anybody in a group can loot a body and everything like that but i don't think we've ever talked about experience at all so this is new information to the best of my knowledge so now we know if anybody on the team, as long as you at least hit the enemy with any kind of damage, any a shot, whatever, explosion, run up and punch it with your hand, whatever the case, you're going to get experience from that. But the person who actually does the killing blow to the enemy gets slightly more experience. I wonder how slight it actually is. Something I'm still not sure about when it comes to the loot, and this tweet could possibly be confirming it, is whether or not you have to participate in a fight to get the loot. Because the last you know part of that tweet actually says that anyone can loot a corpse regardless of who killed it, but that could be referring to the person in the group. It's like, they might be saying anyone in the group can loot it, even if you weren't the one that actually dealt the final blow to the enemy. So I'm not entirely sure, but it could also be saying anyone. Like, literally anyone can stumble upon the dead body of an enemy and loot it. Next up, we're going to look at some information for trading amongst players, and it's information we have not had yet, and it's that you can actually set your prices for your items. So this person tweets Pete Hines and says, If we decide to take the role of trader, can we set our own prices depending on inventory rarity? And Pete replies with, You decide whatever you want to charge for anything you trade slash sell. Also allows you to give folks things for free if you want to charge zero caps. So this is both good and bad information. It's more like 80% good, 20% bad, because... There's really not much of a negative here. It, the fact that you can like, set the prices as high as you want is a bit of an issue. It depends on how rare some items are in the game. We know there's rare resources after nuking a location and things like that. So if like those items are legitimately rare and you can't get them any other way in the game, then that can be a bit of a problem because the secondary market, the, the economy in the game can be pretty broken if like we're trying to sell these rare resources. Like, I want 20,000 caps for one piece of this rare resource or whatever. Like Obnoxious things like that could be annoying. It was honestly a bit surprising because we hadn't heard this just yet, and we know that there are NPC traders in the game, so I assumed that there was going to be like a set price or a value for all the items in the game, so I didn't think we'd actually be able to set our own prices with other players, but that seems to be the case. But I do like that you can, you know, essentially give people items just by making it cost zero caps. That's a good thing if you're trying to help out your friends and things like that, who maybe like, you know, they're like a decent level, level 10 or 15, but they have shitty equipment, you like, you know what, I've been looting for a while, I have some badass armor, some badass guns, here you go. Next up, we actually learned that you can sleep in Fallout 76, and you still get the rest and like experience bonus or whatever it is that you usually get in the Fallout games. It's kind of odd, but let's look at it. So she tweets Pete Hines and says, What would be the point of sleeping if you can't wait anymore? Will it act like a save point? And Pete replies with, Maybe you want the bonuses you get from sleeping and being rested. Maybe you think your character is adorable and love to watch them sleep. 
So I'm not entirely sure how she knew you could sleep in the game. Maybe he answered a tweet prior to that one that confirmed sleep was in the game. But up until now, we did not know that. And in the previous Fall games, in New Vegas, maybe four, I don't remember, I only played a very little small amount of survival mode for Fallout 4. New Vegas sleep was a survival mechanic, and we hadn't heard anything about sleep being a survival mechanic for 76. And I feel like the fact that sleeping is returning, it should be, like you should have to sleep. The only thing is, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work, because in a normal Fallout game, a single-player Fallout game, you sleep in past time for however many hours you want to sleep. And that's not going to be the case with this game, because it's a online game, the world's constantly moving, you know, time's going by whether you're playing or not. So you, in, it's not just about your character, so your character can't sleep for five hours and time within the whole world of Fallout 76 on that server passes five hours. That's not how it's going to work. So you just, like, awkwardly lay in bed and, like, stare at your character while they're sleeping. Do you have to sleep for, lay there for a certain amount of time to get, like, the well-rested bonus? Or can you, like, lay down and hop right back up and you have it? Next up, kind of a quick, small one, might be important to some people. We know that you can actually... Like customize your character at any point. You can change your character's appearance anytime you want to, but it actually turns out it's not something you do in-game. According to Pete Hines, it's actually on the main menu. So this person tweeted Pete Hines first about, you know, the customizing your character, and he kind of gave him, like, a jokey reply, but then they replied again and said, but will you have, like, an option in your pause menu, or do you have to have a certain station in your camp? To which he replied, it's an option in the main menu, doesn't cost anything. It's kind of odd because this actually contradicts with what Todd Howard said at QuakeCon because he actually says that you can change the way your character looks at any time. You can also, any time in the game, change how your character looks. Because you, you know, you're going to play a character for a long time and you can, you can swap out, change your sex, anything, your hair, everything, um, just so that you don't feel like, well, I, have to st I don't like how I picked in the very right. first second what I look like. Um, and a uh, really, really cool feature. And look, I'm not trying to be a douche about it or split hairs here, but if I have to go to the main menu of the game, which means I have to exit the game to customize my character, that's not any time, really. Like, any time would be at a settlement, at a workbench, or just in the pause menu or whatever the case. That's any time. Having to actually leave the entire game to change my character, that's kind of frustrating. This one's also kind of interesting, I suppose. I'm not going to read it because it's a bit of a lengthy exchange, but essentially what it is with the public workshops in the game where everybody can build that, whatever's built there stays there. Even if you and everybody in your squad on your team leaves, whatever structures you built stay there for the next group to come along. Like, I'm not even sure why that's a thing or why it's even relevant because with the other stuff, like when your, your friends build like their settlement or their camp or whatever and they log out, it goes away. Like, it just disappears so I'm not entirely sure why the public workshop stays, but maybe it's to incentivize people, like, maybe trying to build, like, a big city or something like that. Because if, like, I build a bunch of buildings and, like, some trade stands and things like that in, like, say, a public workshop, maybe somebody else will come along and add to it. And that server can inevitably have, like, a really big town of some sort, essentially, that either can be used by other players or maybe they'll just destroy it because they're douchebags. And this will be the last tweet we look at today, and P.I. tweeted out saying, My favorite Fallout 76 playtest moment from this week, grouping up with Sh Sean the Baptist, Baptiste, I don't know, and Jason the Gamer, and the three of us deciding to all wield commie bashers from the carnival games we found in the amusement park and bop scorchers to death. Now, the amusement park is something we've known about since E3 when we first seen some of the gameplay trailers and stuff like that, but some of you out there might not know that there was an amusement park in the game, but there is. Hopefully it's something like Nuka World, because he mentions the carnival games that are there. And in Nuka World, you actually had games you could play. Like, there was the Kami Basher, which is pretty much whack-a-mole. Uh, and then there was, like, the Skee Ball and some other games and stuff like that. And you actually earn tickets and get prizes and stuff like that. If that's actually in Fallout 76 in Camden Park. That'd be very, very fun. It'd give you something to do outside of questing. You and your friends could hang out at Camden Park. And people could, like, get together. Like, a bunch of people on the server could get together and, like, try to beat each other's high scores on games and stuff. Like, Camden Park, if it actually has many games to play, I think will be a very popular location. Now, the Kami Bopper, I'm 99.9% .9 sure, is the Kami Whacker from Fallout 4 Nuka World. Uh, so that's a returning weapon, and kind of an underwhelming returning weapon, similar to the Paddle Ball we learned about the other day. Like, I'm not at all against them putting these weapons into the game, but it's like, they're kind of underwhelming. It's like, oh, look guys, the Paddle Ball weapon's returning, or the damn Whack-A-Mole Bopper thing's returning. It's like, eh, I don't really care personally, but whatever. At least there's more weapons in the game. And that's a roundup of all the recent information from Twitter for Fallout 76. The only one that was kind of old, like I mentioned previously, was the experience one that was a couple days old. But as some of you know, I've been kind of busy recently. So a quick roundup of all the information in this video. The guitar sword is not actually a playable guitar. Everybody in the group gets experience for killing an enemy. The person who delivers the final blow gets a little bit more experience. When it comes to trading with other players, you can buy or sell. <laughs> what is this fucking gameplay? Sorry, when it comes to trading or selling to other players, you can set your prices to whatever you want from zero caps, giving away your stuff for free, or potentially as high as you want to. 
Sleep is also confirmed, but we don't know yet if it's any kind of a survival mechanic, and you still get the well-rested bonus, but still don't know exactly how it's going to work. The public workshop locations where everybody can build, whatever's built there stays regardless of whether or not you log out. Like, it's there for players potentially forever until it gets destroyed or something. We have a returning weapon in the Kami Bopper or Kami Whacker, I'm not sure what the name's going to be in Fallout 76, and potentially there will be carnival games in Fallout 76 in Camden Park. So, tons of info in this video, guys. Didn't realize there's actually going to be this much information before I started recording, but there's actually quite a bit. So, let me know your thoughts below with one or all of these things that we talked about in this video. And if you guys want to enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Turn on notifications. Follow me on Twitter at the Dashing David, at my Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Or at least let's like a chuck in me, serenity Or at least just peace of mind, give me